with Denver police turned violent near police headquarters. We've been watching as fences are smashed, torn down, protesters starting fires and building umbrella barricades. Air Tracker 7 is above that scene right now. This is a live look at downtown Denver where we have seen this clash happening now for about the last hour or so. Uh, nine o'clock was when we first saw that clash with protesters at the gate. Then they were moving. Then there was more fires that were starting and yet protesters are still out right now at this hour. That's right. We've been watching Denver police and fire literally going around downtown, putting out fires. Denver 7's Addie Guajardo has been following those protests all night. Addie, what are you seeing right now? The fucking door! Oh, Jacqueline and Jason, I'm going to back up a little bit right now. Give me one second. We're going to try to get away from these protesters getting a little too close for comfort. They're right here on 13th and Cherokee. There is a business owner right across the street. They just started an argument with right now. They're right outside the police department where there is DPD and full riot gear. I'm sorry, I'm, we're going we're gonna to send it back to you because we don't feel comfortable right now, Jason and Jacqueline. So we're going we're gonna to get back out of this right now. The most important thing, Addy, is that you were safe. So please get to a safe place. We'll come back to you in a little bit. Uh, we have a lot going on right now. You can see this shot from Air Tracker 7 as we've been watching these uh, p protesters who have been calling uh, to abolish the Denver Police Department. And again, as, as they zoom in, uh, and you saw there in uh, in Addie's live shot, um, and our reporters have been telling us uh, so far tonight, uh, these protesters that have come out um, do not appear to have nonviolence on the brain. A lot of them came uh, very aggressive towards our crews and aggressive towards police, as we saw uh, in some of the video from earlier on tonight. And just that, just as you just saw uh, there, many of them come, coming equipped, wearing gas masks, some of them with riot shields. We saw several, uh, even with potential weapons. Uh, our reporters have uh, showed us and, and told us that they saw one with a sledgehammer, one with a, a small ax or a hatchet. Um, several windows have been broken broken out and again several fires uh, have been set. This looks like a relatively small group of protesters, although this group has been growing throughout the evening, but they're having a pretty large impact right now. We want to send it to Denver 7's Lance Hernandez, who is also live. Lance, where are you and what are you seeing right now? I'm at 13th and Cherokee. You can see the protesters still massing behind me in the middle of the intersection. We see a number of young men over here with long boards, a number of men on bicycles, many of them with backpacks. Who knows what's in those backpacks? A couple blocks away, we saw a couple guys uh, take off toward the library, uh, and then we do not want them. Certainly understand that uh, a number of protesters fighting against racism, fighting to defund the police department. Here, we saw them set fireworks off here in the street. If you turn around, you can see uh, those uh, headlights and flashing red and blues in the background. Uh, that's the Denver Police Department, a number of officers, SWAT vehicles, other motorcycle cops just kind of massing up behind over there about Bannock, uh, Acoma on, on uh, 13th, just waiting to, to see what happens next. The crowd behind me over here uh, still in the street. We're hearing them yell. Uh, we saw them go up and visit with somebody over here at the Dozens restaurant, and then they walked away from it. But we have seen uh, a number of windows shattered. We have seen a number of fireworks thrown, what sounded like cherry bombs, over at police headquarters a little bit earlier this evening. We've seen people with, with sledgehammers. We've seen people with bats. Uh, had one uh, tenant of that apartment complex that a window was busted out said he had seen people with axes. And he said that he's watched uh, a number of protests as they've occurred over the last several weeks from his balcony. And he said the crowd uh, tonight seems a little bit different, less of a Black Lives Matter crowd and, and more uh, aggressive, more in, intent on destruction tonight. And we've certainly seen some of that. Uh, we've also seen people uh, call for, uh, you know, police to end racist uh, activity. So. Uh, on this anniversary, this weekend anniversary of the Elijah McLean incident in Aurora. That's why all of the attention occurring tonight. Uh, more may happen tomorrow, but uh, that's what we're seeing this evening. I'm going to go ahead and turn it back to you reporting live at 13th and Cherokee. As the protesters start going up uh, Cherokee, this is right by police headquarters where it all started a little bit earlier. I'm Lance Hernandez reporting.
And just to, to remind our viewers, uh, as Lance just mentioned, but 13th and Cherokee is one of the corners where Denver Police Headquarters sits right downtown. We have seen uh, these protesters move from that area uh, down Bannock Street towards the, the corner of the city and county building, and then eventually going around in the air area and vicinity of the Denver Public Library. Uh, our crews on the ground have reported multiple windows smashed. Uh, and as we have seen in our live video, both starting at 9 o'clock and then through throughout the day as there have been more clashes. Uh what appears to be pepper spray, what appears to be some pepper balls and or some projectiles coming from police to try to disperse these protesters as they continue to now make their way once again through downtown. And I've been keeping an eye on Denver Police Twitter feed so far. They have not tweeted anything. We haven't had any word yet on whether anyone has been arrested, but we have been watching as firefighters put out fires. We've watched as protesters have been shattering windows downtown and as they are clearly intent on causing damage while they're down there. I'm seeing online that this protest has been referred to as the give them hell protest and I'm also seeing that they told people to be ready to be ready to deliver their gear. People obviously came uh, equipped and ready for this protest. We saw people opening up umbrellas and forming an umbrella barricade. They have gas masks. They have helmets. Uh, we heard that they one of them had a SWAT shield. Uh, obviously Denver police are also very well equipped for this protest. Yes, and one thing to keep in mind uh, as we as we compare this, because uh, clearly an after dark protest in downtown Denver with police in, in SWAT gear is going to be compared to the protest that took place after the death of George Floyd. This protest did not necessarily start as the day long peaceful protests uh, that we saw usually that started earlier on in the day. There were speakers. Uh, there was a lot of focus on the Black Lives Matter movement and the death of George Floyd. And then after dark, things seemed to deteriorate into from a nonviolent protest into a violent protest. Uh, this one began at eight o'clock. Uh, we had uh, our, our crews there on the ground. Uh, then right about at nine o'clock is when we start started to see things take a turn. So in comparison to the other nonviolent that then became violent, this one, it didn't take it very long for things to uh, turn into a clash with police. That's absolutely right. And we have Denver 7's Addie Guajardo on the scene live right now. She's been there from the very beginning. Addie, you're in a safer place now. Is everything okay? I am Jacqueline Jason. Those protesters have walked off down on Cherokee Street. Now we had to leave our live shop because some of them were so angry. They were they were just ramming up against us with those shields. I was trying to protect Leah, making sure everything was OK out here. Now they tell me they are just absolutely angry. They are done with peaceful protests. They say they're going to not stop until they burn this city to the ground. They're not only upset about Elijah McClain, but they say so many other lives that have been lost. They say the police department is not being held accountable for their actions. They want to defund the police department. Now I did have a moment to speak to one of the protesters who was very angry, had a moment to calm him down, to really have a discussion about what is going on here. And that's exactly what he told me. He says, we are tired of the police department not being held accountable for their actions. We saw some of that anger flare earlier today as the Denver Police Department officers fired off some kind of pepper balls at the protesters and they responded by throwing firecrackers over the gate that they had at the Denver Police Department. Now, they're not only angry about lives lost, they also tell me they're angry about that clash that happened earlier this week as the Denver Police Department did a sweep on homeless camps. Now, this is what we know. According to the police department, officers went cleared out that area where those homeless people were at. Now, we're told that they went to make a detainment because there was someone who had some kind of weapon during that detainment. They told us that a bystander or a couple of bystanders attacked or kicked two of the officers, and that's why there was a huge police presence. So I'm giving you a little bit of backup story, but why they're angry as well. Now, what happened then is there is video of city council woman, Denver city council woman, Sita Baca, showing the clash between the Denver police officers and homeless advocates. That shows officers using batons to hit some of those homeless advocates. Sita Baca telling these advocates that they had the right to sue. We spoke to Sita Baca, who says she stands by her word 
words, despite the mayor Michael Hancock saying he was disappointed by the words he saw in that video. And tonight we're seeing that anger truly flare up and that clash between the officers and the protesters tonight. So that kind of gives you a little bit of backstory of where some of this anger is flaring up and why these protesters have turned violent. Now we haven't heard, I haven't seen a tweet from the Denver Police Department, but the presence is definitely big. I'm going to send right. it out to Lance. Lance got some uh, protesters over there. Yes, police actually just pushed some of the protesters out of here just a couple of minutes ago. Some of the protesters were over here breaking the windows on the city and county building. Now, the city and county building had been boarded up for a while. I'm not sure if they had boards on the on the west side of this here, but we've counted at least three, four windows uh, around here that uh, were busted by protesters just within the last three or four minutes. As soon as that uh, glass started shattering, uh, uh, police moved in. Uh, they had their uh, pepper gun, pepper guns trained on the protesters and moved them out. But that's what we've seen, a number of protesters with backpacks, armed with little billy clubs, with bats, whatever have you. It wasn't anything major here. It wasn't any kind of a, uh, uh, an ax or a, a sledgehammer like we saw a little bit earlier, but you can see the damage that they caused to the, to the city and county building over here. We're gonna try to catch up with the protesters uh, over here. You can see police starting to move now. Um, here comes another truck behind me, another group of police officers heading to try to catch up with the protesters to see where they're moving. A, a number of protesters yelling at us when we were trying to get some pictures of those windows telling us, don't shoot that, focus on the real issue. So they don't want us taking pictures of the damage, yet they're causing damage for a reason. Um, let's go ahead and catch up over here now. We're moving down. This is Cherokee here between the backside of the city and county building and the U.S. Mint. Uh, police have, have stopped up here at Colfax and are getting out, so we're gonna see if uh, some protesters were trying to target one of the buildings over there as well. But that's the situation that we've seen within the last five, 10 minutes here uh, at the city and county building. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it back to you. And we want to give you a quick update. We are hearing from Denver police that they have made eight arrests and that right now there are no injuries to any officers during these protests. Again, Denver police have made eight arrests from the protesters and no officers have been hurt. And as of right now, again, also from Denver police that they don't have any streets closed, but they are asking people to avoid that downtown area as they continue to push protesters and these groups of individuals who are causing damage and who we have seen set some fires downtown from place to place all uh, in the vicinity of police headquarters downtown uh, 13th and Cherokee. Uh, as Lance showed us in front of the city and county building there at 14th and, and Bannock as well as uh, again, we continue to monitor this from above as as well as our crews on the ground. Stay with us. We will have more uh, on these violent protests as Denver police clash with protesters here uh, for another night here in downtown Denver. We'll be right back.